the liquid can flow also. Why the liquid should flow at all? We increase pressure on one side of the molecules in a particular direction. And if there is a freedom here, then because of the force we apply with pump or with gravity by giving the slope, by any means we apply force on the molecules and they gain certain acceleration and start moving. When they move, there are certain forces opposite to it. When these forces become equal to the force applied, then acceleration stops. Okay, only acceleration stops, but so far the liquid has gained certain velocity. By the time these forces become equal, before that they have gained certain velocity and they keep on moving, moving, moving. That is flow of liquid. So, what is the cause of flow of liquid? Application of pressure on one side. This is in brief. Now, when the liquid is flowing, we have seen the flowing liquid and we have seen there are two types of flow that we will discuss here. One is very orderly flow and other is turbulent flow. The orderly flow, what happens there, see it very minutely that there are five particles in a line. One, two, three, four, five. The fluid is flowing. After some time, we see them here. One, two, three, four, five. Again, after some time, we see one, two, three, four, five. Their order is same. That means each and every particle is having same velocity. There is another type of motion. Again, there are particles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and when they move, we see it after some time and here we find these 5 particles but see their order. Here, this is number 4, number 5 is here, number 3 is here, number 1 is here, number 2 is here. This order has changed. After some time, again, we find Again order has changed and maybe this is now two, one, five and here four, three. How this can happen? This can happen only if the four is jumping over five and comes here, four is here, five is here. Here, 1 is jumping over 2. This way. So, 1 is ahead and 2 goes back. This. Here, when they come here, again, 3 has gone to number 1 position. It has jumped here. Okay. And 5 has gone to number 3 here. Okay, they will not go backward, so I will not make it. So 3 has gone here and 5 and 4 are in the same order. Now here you are seeing that they are overtaking, going to one side, cross it and coming to the same line. This you have seen in our general traffic also. In our school, on our roads, this type of motions are there when we are overtaking the traffic. For overtaking the traffic, what do we need? We need some extra space. Here, this is the space. Road. Here, this is the road. But they cannot do the overtaking on this road. They have extra space. They press, go here and then come here. Go here and come here. Go here and come here. So when the liquid is showing this type of motion, it is pressing the wall. 
of the container pressing wall of the container here it is not pressing wall of the container they maintain their order everyone has same speed here different particles have different speed they are overtaking from the sides and they are compressing the walls of the container it may be a tube they are compressing if it is in the river then they are pushing the ground pushing the sides and jumping this is what they are showing so these are the two types of motion this is turbulent motion <clears throat> this is streamlined motion and in streamlined motion all particles all particles same velocity same order here they have different velocities and different order and what is the effect of this extra pressure on wall so this is streamlined flow and turbulent flow these are the two types of flow now first we will be studying streamlined flow in streamlined flow there is one uh, principle and that principle is known as continuity of motion this is a very important principle in streamlined flow suppose there is a tube which has got different diameters at different points okay the liquid is flowing in it and the liquid is flowing in streamlined manner there will be no overtaking so in this what happens this is one line of liquids we will call it one streamline this is another line like this this is another line okay see if there are three lines here 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 because all these lines are stream lines we call them stream lines and they make a queue and go in the queue just like this and they will never overtake each other one come in place of this one come in place of this no this is a streamline flow in this streamline flow we mix another thing another principle if from here in one second 10 liter of water has entered every one second 10 liter is entering how much is coming out from here answer it is 10 liter which is coming out this is larger one will it not be 11 liters or 12 liter answer no why from where that additional 1 liter will come we are from here sending how much 10 liter so this tube cannot generate water this cannot make water so if you are sending 10 liter it will be only 10 liter coming from here now how much is flowing at this cross section every 1 second 10 is entering every 1 second 10 is coming out so every 1 second 10 is passing through it the same quantity of liquid is flowing in a tube from every cross section from this cross section from this cross section from this cross section and from this cross section same amount same quantity of liquid flow at every cross section this is principle of continuity mathematically we get an equation for this what is that equation how much water flow from here if this area is a1 and the velocity of fluid here is v1 v1 then how much water is flowing in one second a1 into v1 see 
in one second the distance travelled is x x1 how much time one second okay then what is its speed x1 upon 1 that is v1 okay how much is this water this area is a1 this length is x1 then how much is the volume of this water base area multiplied by height a1 x1 is volume now divide it with time suppose it has taken time t t1 if it is taken 1 then 1 so x1 t1 is what distance upon time that is velocity that is a1 v1 is volume of the water which is flowing per second so here how much volume is flowing per second a1 v1 here a2 v2 here a3 v3 but we know that every one second same quantity of liquid flow this is the quantity flowing here this is the quantity flowing here this is the quantity flowing here and the same quantity is flowing because of the principle of continuity so we write here by the principle of continuity a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 is equal to a3 v3 this is by principle of continuity so please remember this principle on the basis of this principle we can make another assumption if these three are equal then what is the relation of v1 and v2 which is larger because these two are equal then if area is decreasing the velocity has to increase here if area is increasing then velocity has to decrease here so wherever the pipe is narrow the velocity will be large so this is a very important conclusion and please remember this wherever area is smaller the velocity will be faster now if we are going in a river river has the same width where the area will be smaller answer if the width is same then wherever the depth is less the area will be smaller i make that river here okay bed of the river bottom of the river is due to stones and sand this river is like this we don't know but at the places it is like this this is bottom now where is the water here is the water flowing on it now from the top the water has the same level the boys are seeing this they want to go inside they want to find out where it is deeper and where it is less deep what they find that at this place the velocity is very fast here the velocity is very small and here velocity is regular in this in this they observe that v2 is larger than v1 and v1 is larger than v2 uh, v3 where it is slowest it is lowest at v3 where it is highest at v2 and with this they have to make the conclusion and you know it wherever the area of cross section is less the velocity is more so here because width is same area will be calculated only by height so here velocity is more area should be less that means this height should be less here this should be very deep because velocity is minimum so in the river wherever we see 
that the water is very calm and flowing very slowly. How is the depth there? <clears throat> the depth is maximum. The deep water runs very calm. And the one which is shallow runs very fast. So this is how we make up where it is deep and where it is shallow. Yes. So this is principle of continuity. With that we make it. In the next lecture we will see what are the energy contents at different points of the flowing liquid. And with that we will move to Bernoulli's principle. Thank you.